Welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, March 17th, 2024. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is triumphant and victorious. The Bible basis is coming out of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. The Bible truth. Jesus deserves all the honor. The memory verse. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And that's Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, the King James Version. By the end of the lesson, we will explain why so many gathered to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and King. Express a willingness to always honor Jesus through our everyday actions and repent of the times when we have not given Jesus the honor due to him. Our lesson overview. Life need for today's lesson. Jesus is the only true hero. The Bible learning. The triumphal entry of Christ was the greatest event of all time. The Bible application. Jesus is to be honored and lifted above all others. Students' responses. Make an effort this week to remove something from their lives that can become idolatrous. Our lesson scripture. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. And Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. This is the King James Version. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to dis two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. The biblical definitions of today's lesson. King and cult. King, royal, a supreme ruler. Cult, the offspring of a horse or a donkey. Light on the word. Bethpage means the house of figs. It was a small village located near the Mount of Olives, located east of Jerusalem on the way to Jericho. It was surrounded by a wall. Each of the synoptic gospels mentions this location in their respective triumphal entry accounts. It was there where Jesus' disciples obtained the donkey and coat for him to ride into Jerusalem. The introduction for today's lesson. A prophet and a triumph. A contemporary of Haggai, Zechariah began his prophetic career around 520 BC during the reign of King Darius. At 14 chapters, the book of Zechariah is the longest book among the minor prophets, though the first eight chapters of the book are dated. The ninth chapter mentions no dates. Most scholars believe a significant amount of time passed between the eighth and ninth chapters. Lesson point one, rejoice for the king. Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine of our lesson text in review. The author began by exhorting the daughter of Zion and daughter of Jerusalem 
to rejoice. Here the former represented the inhabitants of Jerusalem, while the latter represented the nation of Israel as a whole. The king had one characteristic that most would not associate with regal authority, humility. The new king would be meek and lowly as opposed to proud and haughty. He also would ride in on a donkey as opposed to a well-armored war horse. The Israelites were instructed not to trust in majestic war horses. Notable scripture, Isaiah chapter 31 verse 1. After proclaiming a prediction against the nations in Zechariah chapter 9 verses 1 through 8, Zechariah turned to the fate of Israel in verses 9 through 17. He declared that the Lord will save his people by protecting them in battle and establishing peace among the nations, whether the king who brings victory for Israel is a human king or the Lord himself is unclear from the prophecy. But in either case, God is involved in delivering Israel and establishing peace. The addresses to the daughter of Zion and daughter of Jerusalem are synonymous because Zion was located in the southeastern part of Jerusalem, lowly is Ani in Hebrew and can mean poor, humble, or even oppressed, indicating that this king is both just and righteous, but also humble in status and attitude, as writing a work animal indicates. Coming to Jerusalem, as Jesus and his disciples descended Jerusalem, they came to a small village upon called Bethpage, it was here that Jesus made what probably seemed like strange requests. He asked two unnamed disciples to go into the village and retrieve a donkey and coat for him. When the owner of the donkey and the coat learned that Jesus requested them, he gave them freely and joyfully. Lesson point two, in the presence of the king. Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 3 of our lesson text in review. Jesus chose to ride on a colt, a symbol of humility, which made his triumphal entry and crucifixion forever memorable. But the presence of a king on a colt did not keep the people from praising him. They perceived a prophet among them and greeted him as a king. Jesus' ministry was coming to a close, and he and his disciples were about to enter Jerusalem for his final days. In the opening scene, they were in Bethpage on the Mount of Olives to the east of Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives figures in the Gospel as the location where Jesus prepared for his triumphal entry and the place where he was arrested. Although it was located outside the city, the temple was visible. In preparation for his entry into Jerusalem, Jesus told two disciples to get a donkey and its colt that they would find tied up in the village nearby, a reference to Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, which prophesied that Israel's king would come riding on a donkey's colt. Jesus explained that the disciples should tell the owner of the donkeys that the Lord needed them. The questions for today's lesson. Question one, spell correctly the name of the town where Jesus and the disciples stopped before entering Jerusalem. Question two, how many disciples did Jesus send to find the cult? Make sure to write down your answers. Not your usual king. Kings were supposed to arrive with legions of bodyguards, officers, great riches, property, pump, and circumstance. Chariots were the usual mode of transportation, or a king might ride on a mighty war horse, but not Jesus. Lesson point three, a kingly entrance. Matthew chapter 21 verses four and five of our lesson text in review. The previous verses in this passage complete the plan for Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The prophet Zechariah's words foretold God's promise to fallen humanity. Historically, these words ran completely counter to the people's understanding of a kingly entrance. But the words of this prophecy gave the people a glimpse of the one to come, the one Matthew referenced in his text, a king who comes meekly. 
Matthew interrupted the scene momentarily in order to explain that this event was a fulfillment of Zechariah's prophecy. Matthew both explicitly claimed this and provided a quotation blending and blending Isaiah chapter 62 verse 11 and Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 to remind the readers that the details of the scene were in alignment with the prophetic words. The New Testament writers often blended several verses or passages from different portions of scripture to reveal that the events of the New Testament were fully in line with God's salvation history as prophesied. The significance of Jesus as God's chosen Savior is magnified by the fact that every word of the prophecy was fulfilled, including the appearance of both the donkey and its coat. Jesus, the son of David, arrived in Jerusalem, meek and riding on a donkey. The Greek word cross can mean humble, meek, or gentle. The King James Version's rendering as meek probably best captures both nuances of gentleness and humility, indicating that the chosen Messiah is a king who was neither a warrior nor an arrogant ruler who had to show off his power. Though royal and God's chosen, he did not display behavior associated with the royal. Who is he? The people of Jerusalem were excited and asked about Jesus' identity. Before this time, Jesus had not allowed anyone to publicly acknowledge him as the Messiah. Most of Jesus' ministry had been done outside of Jerusalem to avoid agitating the Jewish leaders. But now, these same people to whom he had ministered were leading the procession into the city, and the city dwellers wanted to know about this king who sat on a colt and not on a throne. The crowd replied that he was the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Some joined in the praise. Others were disappointed to see Jesus enter the city without the majestic fanfare. Lesson point four, growing excitement. Matthew chapter 21 verses 6 through 11 of our lesson text in review. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the crowd threw down their coats and branches along the road and shouted praises to him. Their actions honored him and they greeted Jesus with shouts and singing of the Hallow Psalms, Psalms 113 through Psalms 118, that were customary greetings to people journeying to Jerusalem for the Passover. However, the people knew Jesus was much more than just another traveler. They were honoring him for the miracles they had seen him perform. The throngs of people, the fur that the Messiah had come, and the deafening shouts of praise created a palpable momentum in the city. Leading the procession were children, not soldiers, who sang his praises and shouted his glory. Matthew revealed that both Jesus' instructions to the disciples and Zachariah's prophecy were fulfilled. Jesus the Messiah was mounted on a donkey's colt as he was about to enter Jerusalem. Although this scene is also narrated by Mark and Luke, only Matthew indicated that there were two donkeys. Notable scriptures, Mark chapter 11 verses 1 through 10 and Luke chapter 19 verses 29 through 40. Mark and Luke state that there were there was one donkey. It is possible that they were reading Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 as it was intended in Hebrew poetic form, seeing the parallelism that puts two or more synonymous words or phrases parallel to each other, but referring to one thing. Zechariah mentioned a male donkey and a young male donkey or foal noting that it is the offspring of a female donkey. The point of the re repetition was to intensify and clarify by referring to the same animal with synonymous words. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, it was not just any donkey, but a young one, the offspring of a female donkey. This intensifies the humility of the royal Messiah, who will not appear on a horse or chariot, but a donkey. 
a regular work animal, even on a donkey's foal, which would not be as strong as a fully mature donkey. This messianic figure, though royal, will stand out from other royal figures in his humility. Zechariah did not mention the crowd's response to God's king entering Jerusalem, but for Matthew, the crowds were important. In 1539, the crowds were sent away and had not been very active. But now in Matthew 21, verses 8 through 11, that was Matthew 15, verse 39 first. But now in Matthew 21, verses 8 through 11, they became active again, honoring Jesus as they spread their garments and branches in his path and blessing him as the son of David. A similar response to a king happened in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 13, when Jehu was anointed king of Israel, the crowds echoed Psalms 118, verse 26, in their shout. This psalm is part of the Passover liturgy, an association with particular revelance, since Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover together in Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30, just before he was arrested. Hosanna is a Greek transliteration of the Hebrew Hoshia Na, which means please save, is a regular part of the liturgy in the praise psalms, and became a common way of expressing joy by Jesus' time. Now that Jesus had entered Jerusalem, the response was quite different. Instead of showing honor, the crowd was shaken and asked, Who is he? Who he was? because some of Jerusalem's inhabitants had not encountered Jesus before. His entry caused them great fear. Matthew used the Greek word seo, which can refer to both physical trembling, even an earthquake, and emotional disturbance. Douglas Hare notes that in Matthew, seo refers to supernatural events, as in Matthew 8 verse 24, Matthew 24 verse 7, Matthew chapter 27 verse 54 and Matthew chapter 28 verse 2. Then when the people of the city asked whom Jesus was, the crowds proclaimed that he was a prophet. This identification was not incorrect. Nevertheless, the response to Jesus in Jerusalem was not fitting for one of God's prophets, for the city responded to his teachings by arresting and crucifying him. Jesus is not a human king with an earthly throne, despite being the son of David. In this passage, he fulfilled the prophetic vision of Zechariah, which promised that God would provide a king from David's descendants, who would do away with violence and oppression. This king will be victorious, but also meek, and will provide salvation to Israel and the nations. Despite Jesus' promise of salvation, the people misunderstood even Jesus' own disciples did not understand who he was, so it should not be surprising that the crowds were shaken and confused. The Bible Application In today's society, in today's society, it is very easy to be swept up in celebrity culture. We have a tendency to treat celebrities with the level of veneration that should be reserved for Jesus alone. We spend more time on gossip websites than we do in the Word of God. We concern ourselves with our follower count on social media websites, getting a glimpse of the President of the United States at his inauguration brings a feeling of exhilaration. Unfortunately, church culture may not be exempt from this phenomenon. We treat special guests in special seats in our sanctuary, even though James warned against this in James chapter 2, verse 1. We show up in larger numbers when a celebrity pastor takes the platform at our church but are absent from other weekly services. Today's lesson should demonstrate that there is one king in our lives, he is to be worshipped and lifted above all others. If that isn't the case, then we should make the proper adjustment. Students' Responses Make an effort this week to remove something from your life that can become idolatrous. How many hours a day do you spend tracking cultural news?
How about time spent online? Take a break from it. Set aside some time to reflect on whether it has hindered or enhanced your relationship with Jesus. Dig a little deeper. There are 12 fulfillment citations in Matthew's gospel. These are passages that claim what is reported happened to fulfill what was written in the prophets. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Found in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Wise men from the east told Herod the king in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And that's found in Micah chapter 5 verse 2. And Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the word had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son citing Hosea chapter 11 verse 1 then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah citing Jeremiah 31 verse 15 and Jesus went and lived in a city called Nazareth so that what was spoken by the prophet might be fulfilled that he would be called a Nazarene and living Nazareth he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Found in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. That evening they brought to Jesus many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with the word, and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken to the pro by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Found in Isaiah 53, verse 4. And many followed him, and he healed them all, and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And that's Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 3. This is why I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, and that's found in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. From Psalm 78, verse 2. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. Citing Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet. Jeremiah 27, verses 9 through 10. This is significant because Matthew writes to demonstrate that Jesus is the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. The number 12 is even symbolic of the nation of Israel, 12 tribes. Moreover, the genealogy of Jesus is represented is presented in such a way, three sets of 14 generations each, to demonstrate that Jesus is the promised descendant of David. Because Jesus is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, it is expected that the prophecies that he makes will likewise be fulfilled. Lord, help us to remove things in our lives that can become idolatrous. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our daily home Bible readings for the week. Monday, the topic is the Lord enthroned as King. Read Psalms 29. Tuesday, the topic is the Lord protects. Read Zechariah chapters 9 verses 10 through 15. Wednesday, the topic is the Lord gives victory. Read Psalms 20. Thursday, the topic is loud songs of joy. Read Psalms 47. Friday, the topic is Your Salvation Comes. Read Isaiah chapter 62, verses 8 through 12. Saturday, the topic is Coming in the Lord's Name. Read Psalms 118, verses 21 through 29. And Sunday, the topic is The Triumphal Entry. Read Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, and Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.